Okay guys, Mossy5734 back with a vid and a bit different guys. <laughs> no cars in this vid at the moment. Well, I don't think I ever make a video without some kind of RC, but anyhow, I'm getting back into airbrushing. I tried it once guys and it was a fail. Yeah, that was years ago. There weren't too many vids out there and especially for what I wanted to do, like doing the RC cars, uh, doing the mini Zs. Um, but yeah, so I'm on this journey and I know a lot of you guys are curious as well. People have asked me about, you know, doing a how-to. So at the moment, this video is about the kind of things you're going to need. I like to cut corners. <laughs> I like things to be cheap. But I've found that, you know what, on certain things you can't cut corners, guys. You've got to buy certain things. Anyhow, without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, guys. Right, your bread and butter. What you basically need, guys, is you need a compressor. All right? This is a compressor that a lot of airbrushers use. I mean, look, at the end of the day, guys, you don't know if it's your cup of tea, right? Don't go throw lots of money at this because just in case it doesn't work out, you hate it, you know, um, you struggle with it. It's going to be like that, oh, guys. I am struggling with this. I mean, I've not been doing it long. I've, I've painted probably twice now, but it's getting my head around it. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty, pretty good at art. But this is a completely different kettle of fish. Anyhow, so this is the AS186 compressor. It's one of them that's branded under so many different names. So you're going to see that all over the place. And basically, it's got this 3 litre cylinder tank underneath here. And that basically fills up. You hear this. It's not crazily loud, but it, it basically fills up. I'll have a running vid at some point, guys. This is just a, a setup, start up vid. Um, so yeah, so that fills up with air, basically, and then it switches off. And you obviously use your airbrush and it depletes it from the tank and then it fills up when it needs to, yeah? If it ever fills up with humidity, you press this here and that releases, there's any water build up in here, which is pretty cool. If you're in a bit, a bit of a humid environment, it'll affect your painting. This is a four uh, bar pressure compressor and here you see the regulator over here. All right, and generally guys, most people that are airbrushing tend to keep it between 18, and 25 um yeah that's what i've really seen guys airbrushing it, there's a lot to it guys <laughs> and how you adjust it is from this black nozzle i'll show you in a minute um here's the specs if you guys want to have a quick look you can pause it on there and have a wee look at that all right i thought that's in focus so yeah you basically adjust it from here if you ever are uh gonna use one you, you, you depress your airbrush and then pick it up from here and there's a plus and a minus sign on here and that way obviously it's plus, that was minus but it only really works when you pull it up and when you're pressing the air on your airbrush then your gauge will basically, as you're pressing it, will go to wherever you want and stay there okay, right, that's where your airbrush connects I've had a real cheap one on here and that's a very small thin hose for the air um, <laughs> guys, I'm a bit, I'm, I don't know man, <laughs> my my experience hasn't been brilliant because uh, maybe I'm clumsy, yeah, but I've ended up clogging up two airbrushes at the moment. So what my advice to you, the reason I'm doing this vid guys is if you're new to this, don't throw lots of money at it. Don't go and buy a £130 <laughs> airbrush, right? I'm not using that just yet guys, yeah, I'm going to get to that. And I've got that with that intention. I've actually become pretty firm that I am going to see this through. So that's why I've invested in that to make sure I don't back down, right? But there's no way I'm using that until I get my um, airbrushing technique sorted and my airbrushing maintenance. That's the big thing here, guys. Look, man. Look at the victims. <laughs> Honestly, look, I know you don't like to watch long videos, yeah, but you need to hear this. Trust me. So. You know, acrylic paints, they dry up so quick, right? And, you know, you, you basically need to be on it. I mean, that, that dried up between two paint sessions, right? Struggle to get it off kind of thing. And then I ended up blocking up the needle, right? Because I didn't know about maintenance, right? So basically, you know, you need to make sure that your needle, your nozzle, you know, it's clean as your airbrushing. We'll go through that. Uh, and when you're changing paints... Or you've done for the day, you've got to clean this out, screw that off, clean the inside out, even take the needle off, clean the needle. If you don't do them small, simple maintenance things, guys, your airbrush is going to be knackered. 
<laughs> and I've got a graveyard going on here, guys. Look. Oh, sorry. Here's another one. <laughs> that was like the first one I started with. I did not know anything about it. And I left it overnight and went back the next day. And it was all bunged up. So, uh, yeah. Maybe, you know, you guys are a lot more well organized than me, yeah. But it was too much for me to kind of absorb in one go. So I was. Well, the point I'm trying to make is don't go expensive. Get a decent airbrush. A decent airbrush. Alright, guys, now, for example, I'll get. I've got this, guys, to show you guys. This is what I would go for, or even cheaper. Now, the thing is performance, it's gonna suffer. You know, you get away with it in the beginning, but in the beginning, guys, it's getting your head around it. Yeah, because a lot of them have got the two function, two way function. So let me just show you this. The reason why I'd say get this is um, because you get everything with it. So, um, this is another one that's just been rebranded by KK Moon, whatever they're called, but there's loads of them on eBay that are about 27 to 32 pound, and they're all basically the same thing. So this kit isn't bad, guys. If you're going to get into it, I personally, I would have gone for something a lot cheaper <laughs> than my earlier ones were like 10 pound, and they were good for me because I learned that, look, man, you don't, your failure is a part of learning. Yeah, it is simple. And, you know, you're going to fail. Unless you're naturally gifted, yeah, yeah, we're going to fail at this, guys. But, you know, don't make the loss expensive. So, this has got everything you need. Um, this has got a nice hose, right? It's it's thicker, it's bigger. Um, and it connects over here. And you can use that um, TPFE tip to get a really good, you know, connection so you're not losing air at any point. And this has a quick release valve, which is pretty cool. And the other bit is there, and that connects to your airbrush and it just you just push off on here and it releases it okay so that's a good bit of kit you know you get your money's worth in this kit here that's good for um you can add your paints or add water when you're cleaning i'd keep that for cleaning with water hot water is really good guys you know i've learned from other people um that having hot water next year when you're changing your colors or when you're um finished for the day Flushing it with hot water really helps to release the you know, paint that's built up. This has an additional, um, like a filter. So it's the same thing as that. That's It collects humidity in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got that built on to here. So it connects to there and then connects to the hose, um, which is all right, depending on where you are. It's, it's probably a decent worthwhile investment for you. So let's get onto the airbrush, guys. Now, you know, if like me, you're brand new to this, Right, this is the whole reason I'm doing this, guys, because, you know, especially for us in the RC world, you know, it's not that self-explanatory. So, here we go. So, basically, your airbrush has needles. This one comes with a spare one. Good idea, right? Because you might end up bodging up your needles. Oh, it's got two spares. That's why I bought this one, right? So, you notice that... Oh, so there mustn't be a needle inside it. So, that's 0 0.5, okay? And that's 0 0.3. Okay, so obviously 0 0.5 is for if you're going to do bigger jobs, yeah, you want to spray a large area. And 0 0.3 is for obviously a lot more finer work. 0 0.5 can be used for fine work as well. Um, you got to get really close and make sure that, you know, you um, check the spring. You know, you might have to decrease the pressure on your uh, compressor before you start. They're important. They're the most fragile bit out of all this, guys. They get blocked really easy. You have to clean the tip of this. They can bend and break really easy. So when you do maintenance, be careful with this stuff. But I'm going to order some from China. I've seen some really cheap ones from China. Now, if they work and they're just as good, you're kind of all right there, you know, guys, because you can get a pack of three for like six pounds. So I'll see how that works out. But yeah. And with these needles, you have, so the needles basically fit into the airbrush. Now, you have two types of um, these airbrushes, right? You have what's called the uh, suction feed and the gravity feed. The suction ones basically has a cup, um, and let me show you. The cup basically attaches to, <laughs> here's one I butchered earlier. <laughs> Look at that, the paint dried, right? I left that overnight. I'm telling you guys, you gotta learn from your mistakes, man. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so I left it thinking, right, I've got, I'm gonna finish that paint job off tomorrow, right? And it just totally dried up in there. <laughs> Anyhow, so you have some of them. This one's not one of them, but it'll have the cup attached to the bottom. 
and that's a suction feed. So basically the paint is sucked up to that tube and it goes here and it mixes with the air. The paint and the air mix here and it gets released out. Okay, that uh, the guys who are really good at airbrushing don't tend to use them. So a lot of the guys tend to use the gravity feed and obviously gravity feeds kind of self-explanatory in the sense that you fill this cup up. So I've taken the lid off, right? You fill the cup up with your paint, right? And it basically gravity just falls through, all right? And then it comes out of here. So pull this off. Are you coming off? Are you not coming off? What are you doing? Right, that's basically a nozzle, all right? So every needle has its nozzle. So let me just show you. So I showed you the two needles and each one will have its own nozzle. So that's a 0.3 nozzle, you've got to fit that. So the needle won't uh, fit properly into a bigger size, obviously. And that's your 0.5. So if you're changing needles, you've got to change your nozzles as well. Okay, right. So I don't know why the whole caps come off there because you shouldn't really be, that shouldn't be exposed when you're painting. Um, I think the plastic needs to be taken off. I'll figure that out. I think she just pull off, but I don't know why it's there. <laughs> right, cool. Right, okay. This bit you could take off if you're going to do some fine painting or you want to clean your nib. Now, I've noticed sometimes the paint clogs up in your brush and you basically just got to, you know, you basically got to clean it and people clean it with the nail like that or they get a Q-tip and they clean it with a Q-tip, right? And that basically releases any um, paint that's clogged over the airbrush and off you go again. Um, so this is, guys, it's got a double action. So you, when you press down, it, when you press down, it releases air. And when you press down and pull back, it releases paint, okay? So whenever you spray paint, press down first. That way it'll release any splatters or splutters that are inside there and then pull back. And never start on your uh, project, right? Start off your project and spray it onto it. Off your project and spray it onto it, like that, okay? And if it's a fine job, get closer and spray closer. But you know, before you start spraying, guys, have a bit of card that's white and spray on that just to make sure that you're getting the kind of uh, the width or the size of strokes that you want, okay? Because you might find it might be coming out a bit too thick. It might be coming out um, speckled, right? I had that experience. Um, and that was because maybe I had the compressor too high for the actual paint, right? So I'll give you an example, guys. Um, so yeah, so that's basically attaches, on this one attaches to this filter, and then the filter attaches to the hose, all right? Um, on normal ones, it'll just go straight to, your hose and that other part will go straight to your compressor. All right, okay. So um, this little tool in here that comes with your kit is for loosening the nozzle. So when you pull all that off, you get to the nozzle, you can undo the nozzle, take it off and put the other one on. All right, so we've gone through everything that is inside this box. As I say, guys, you know, there's loads of vids about maintenance. And so when you finish painting, you wanna make sure you clean this out. Uns this one doesn't unscrew. But you want to basically get a brush and buy a cheap pack of brushes, guys, right? That's between three and five pound. You don't need the big ones. I just got that for projects. But the little ones are what you're going to need. You're going to need. And as soon as you're done, as soon as you're done, <laughs> some hot water in there, right? And give it a little rinse out in the cup with your brush. You also have airbrush cleaner as well. That is really good. Some people make some homemade... Um, cleaner with uh, windscreen wash. <laughs> some people have come out with some other crazy stuff, but anyhow, uh, airbrush cleaner, you know, especially when you finish for the day, leave, you know, you wanna definitely clean it with airbrush cleaner. And how you can tell that it's clean is once you've, you know, pressed it and fired it, there shouldn't be any paint, any color coming out of it. It should be pretty clear. And I put a bit of water in, hot water, and, and do that and make sure there's nothing coming out of it, and that's fine. And then I put some air cleaner in, a few do drops, and I leave it like that. You know, um, but yeah, I have learned the hard way. <laughs> right, what kind of things will you definitely need, right guys? Like I say guys, look, I'm not into spending loads of money on stuff, right? I am just gonna run you through basics. You do need them. And if you're like me, you like to cook corners. <laughs> you're just gonna learn the hard way, right? So, okay, that's your airbrush. As I say, not a bad one, but it's up to you. I, I started with something cheaper and I butchered it. You know, and I didn't feel that bad about it. <laughs> but 
that's thirty pound. It's up to you, but you've got everything that you need in there. You can maybe buy that and then buy um, a ten pound one, um, just so because it'll work off the same thing anyway. So, and this is, let me show you what a more expensive one looks like. Now, I haven't unboxed this. This is just for you guys. I've left it so we can look at this together. But, obviously, the quality, the workmanship will be different. You're probably not going to get a kit with this. And this is uh, a good make. So, Heider and Steenbeck, whatever they call them. It's a German, I think they're a German company. And this is the Dogs Danglies. You've also got the HP 3C, which is the, I think it's the Badger one, which is quite good, a lot of people use that as well. Okay, so I think that's how you open it. Slide it across, and it should open. Please open. <laughs> open Sesame! <laughs> Not happening! Come on! Dude, you don't have to make it so complicated, man. <laughs> well, I think I need to do a tutorial about how to open the bloody box. Oh. Oh, something happened. Yay, okay. Righty, ooh, look at that baby. You know, that's a bit of class there, isn't it, guys? Look at that, it's got that, like, suede. <laughs> Texture, made in Germany, high quality, and you can just tell by the finish. Look at that, that is a different kettle of fish, man. That is, ooh, it feels like a Parker pen. You know, like the difference between a Parker and a Bic. Smaller cup, though. Really small. Oh, you have a big cup as well. Mm. So, yeah, you don't get everything with this. So you are going to probably need to get one of them. If you don't get... You can buy stuff with... Uh, as a whole set. Do you get it? You'll probably see them on eBay. But I would definitely go for something like that. It's a bit more better. A bit more upmarket, better quality. than some of the junk that's out there. So, yep. And it comes with... Is that a spare? 0.4 millimeter. Okay, not point four. Hmm. Is there one in there? So yeah, not much to really write home about. Now let's have a screw the back off, have a look. There it looks like there is a needle in there. Okay. So hopefully that's a spare. Right. I am not using that until I have got my I've got myself into a good routine of maintenance, right? I'm not doing that until then. But yeah guys, I unboxed that for you guys. I waited, thought I'd show you guys, take you guys on the journey with me as well at the same time. Right, here are things that you need, okay? Let's just get to some nitty gritty, right? Um, what do you definitely need? You will need, now it depends guys. Um, obviously you can spray different shells, you can spray Lexan, polycarbonate shells, but at the moment I'm just talking about Mini Z's, all right? So if you were to work on your Mini Z's, the first thing you're gonna need, guys, is uh, to work out where the kind of like defects are. Whatever, now these shells are different, they're molded, aren't they, guys? So you're gonna have mold lines. So if there's any imperfections, you get a Sharpie, you mark them off, and you basically sand them down. Now, sanding down, guys, you gotta be a bit careful with that if you've never done it. Don't go too hard. You will basically, um, like, scratch the surface and it will show up in your paintwork. So, now, with a lot of things, whenever, like with, with plastic in general, guys, um, if it's most plastic that you're gonna spray on, if they're not, like that's obviously ready to be painted on, but if it's something else, um, you know, most plastics have a gloss coat on them. And what you need to basically do, guys, you need to get that gloss coat off, because if you don't, your paint's not gonna stick. So you have to key the plastic. And what that basically means is you have to have sandpaper. Now, there's different types. You can use, um, you can use Scotch-Brite, okay? But don't go too hard with this stuff, okay? Um, next, you have Tamiya do this 600, which is quite the number that I've noticed a lot of people using on these types of shawls. So a 600 sponge sheet, which is pretty expensive. Five pounds for that, and it's tiny, man. Not much to it, you cut section off and sand, basically. Um, apart from that, you get these sanding sticks, which are pretty cool. And these have got whole different variants. Now, if you don't know, guys, grit paper or sandpaper comes in different strengths, yeah? So you get, um, so the lower the number, the harder the, the compound on it, the sand on it is. So, um, so basically, like 400, you know, to 600 is probably all right for you know basically wearing down a surface on an rc mini z okay um when anything lower than that you're gonna end up 
tearing bits out of the out of the shell and then it goes up to a thousand two thousand one thousand five hundred and these sticks come in all them different variations and what they basically help you do is get to some of the hard to reach places you can get to them with these sticks all right okay so they're kind of useful all right i think they're about six pound so because i'm planning on doing some uh, you know some of my little missions on my uh, mini z cars that's the reason why i invested in that on ebay you can get packs of sandpaper grit paper and these vary from 400 to 2000 in the pack all right and yeah it's just for smaller things guys they're not as easy to you know to grit around the sticks are a little bit easier so i'll just show you two of these so that's like 2000 that is really smooth all right, that's really smooth and you can wet sand um, with these as well so you can wet the item and sand with it as well and people do that after they've done like a base coat right um, and then you get then it goes thicker as you're going towards like the 400s the actual you can feel the texture on the sandpaper and it's you know you can definitely feel it a bit more so you can get a packet with like I don't know 20 inside them you can get them off eBay that's a good thing to get what else would you need guys i would definitely say get now i didn't want to get this and i was i was spraying in the garage so basically you know i was there was a good flow of air there it's quite drafty in there quite cold in there i didn't want to get a cleaning pot but i kind of came to the conclusion that you know what i actually do need a cleaning pot right because i afterwards i looked and i'd sprayed over a lot of stuff when i was trying to clean the airbrush so this one is about 13 to 14 pound and it does come with um, a, a <laughs> thank you <laughs> and it does come with a cleaning uh, your airbrush cleaning kit right which is pretty useful so you basically put that together has a little filter in the top here all right what I've done is I've wrapped one layer of t um, tissue paper over the the soft kind of um, I don't know what it's kind of called it's like that soft filter wool you have it in fish tanks as well uh, the handle you stick on right and it's just basically a glass jar right but it is useful guys rather than spraying around trying to clean your brush you pop your brush in there and you spray into there okay so you, i clean my brush all the time now with hot water and clean it in there and i rest my airbrush in here and that's a little handle and it is pretty useful and the double bonus was it came with this kit and you know i didn't think i needed a kit but you know what after all my butchering of these airbrushes here yeah, i've taken pity on their little soles and i got this kit so the kit comes with the little filters that go in there and like i said that, that one little bit of tissue paper i've just you know put around it it will stop these getting used as much oh, sorry guys a bit of a tight ass kind of uh <laughs> tip but you know what it's all good all good in the hood that's for cleaning your needle tip all right pretty sharp little thing all right um, if it does get clogged up a bit. so this is Pretty useful maintenance kit this is the harder and steam back they do one which is 40 pound and sat to that i ain't paying 40 pound for their maintenance kit when i can buy, buy all this for like 12 pound okay so you've got these little metal brushes uh for cleaning the inside of the airbrush and you've got these like you have a bigger version for your pots uh this is also for cleaning the inside of the airbrush right okay yeah, you do need this stuff guys, trust me. Yeah, you can learn the hard way like me. Or oh, the reason I'm doing this video is to save you guys the pain. All right, because <laughs> I've done it. I know what I'm talking about. So, that's something you will need if you are going to do it. Get it as a kit, all right? Work this out to be cost effective. Okay, right, let's move on. Um, so, you're going to have these in your house anyway. Q-tips, you're not supposed to be doing them in your ear. Uh -oh, yeah. And they help clean the nozzle, the, the needle, okay? So that's something you're gonna have lying around anyway. Um, having a little bottle just to store your painting, you know, if you wanna use that paint again, or you wanna mix paint up and have a unique color, you wanna save it, having a little bottle, you know, and these are cheap, man, they're like 10 for four pounds or something like that. So, yep. Now, for your little painting projects, you're gonna obviously need, right, Masking tape, Tamiya do this in different widths. This is 40 millimeter, they do it down to two, four, six millimeters. Not brilliant though, does tear kind of easy and I struggle cutting this with my um, X-Acto knife. 
um, because it's easy to tear, but when you want it to tear, it doesn't tear. But yeah, but I think that's just all over. I had this frog tape, which is what painters use, and this is good tape as well. Um, you know, it is good quality tape. It doesn't bleed, which is an important thing, guys. Something you don't want to happen when you're airbrushing is you don't want that bleeding. You know, especially doing intricate stuff. So it has what's called paint block technology and it basically stops that happening to your paintwork having that like you know nasty kind of uh, not a clear line and it promises to have that so yeah get it, doing that is pretty cool but you want to make sure that you with a scalpel you're pretty good you might actually find it's better off to take the blade out of the exacto knife and just use the blade the back part of the blade okay now um so if you're going to be doing prep guys you want an exacto knife you've got your masking tape there's another type of masking tape you can get as well if you're doing a big, a big project and that comes attached with a sheet and it's pretty handy if you're doing a big shell because you can mask off the area that you're not going to be painting off with all this and this sheet's pretty long it goes to about there so you're talking about a foot a foot and a half pretty useful uh, on a decently sized project have some gloves guys because you don't think it but you're going to paint all over yourself and you know, it does wash off acrylics are water based they're not difficult to get off they're not as poisonous to, to breathe in as well but you know um, better to be safe um, talking about poisonous <laughs> right you definitely need to invest in a mask right guys and to be honest with you guys the paper ones aren't cutting it Right, at the end of the day guys, the thing, I, I know people that spray for a living and it catches up with you. It does catch up. Now acrylics guys, they're maybe not as dangerous, but enamel paints, you know, they, you know, they can be a lot more um, serious. They can affect your lungs if you're doing it long term or later in life. It doesn't catch up when you're young, when you're older it does. Invest in a good mask, it might cost you £10, £15, but it's reusable, right? Um, and to be honest with you guys, you know, <laughs> it looks pretty cool as well. You go like, <laughs> Suicide Squad. <laughs> but yeah, that's where the cartridges are, right? And again, a, a, a little mod that I watched from um, a guy who was a professional sprayer. And basically he said that in here you have, and this is what you have to keep replacing, right? It's basically, you get that. That's what comes, this little pad. Okay, that's what you get with it. You've got to buy these, and these are like the filters, and you've got to change these every so often when they start to get a bit coloured, because the paint's basically getting stuck in here and not going inside your lungs. And what he said is that he said that basically get just two strips of a toilet paper, basically two sheets of toilet paper, fold it over, put it on the outside of it. All right, I'm sharing these tips with you guys. Put it on the outside of it, and put it in here and what will happen is it will start to discolor the tissue paper and not your filter so basically the paint will get trapped there it'll just save you having to buy filters and this guy's been painting his dad's been an airbrusher as well he's on youtube and that's the way he does it and it basically saves you a few pennies and it does the same job so yep so you know it is a worthwhile investment that was about 14 pound guys and it came with everything that you needed and 3m obviously a good company i don't know if this is a chinese knockoff it shouldn't be but the bottom line is if you can smell paint that's bad news it's going inside you shouldn't be able to smell paint when you're painting okay then paper ones aren't cutting it guys and if you do get one of these guys once you've finished put it into the bag the bag basically has you know you know guys it has that strip that you can put together Put it in there so it's not basically working, absorbing odours and absor absorbing, you know, dust and smells um, when you're not using it. Make it last as long as it possibly can. These don't last forever. Um, and people that use them regularly, they say they start to disintegrate after some time. So, but I mean, how often are we going to be painting, guys? And to be honest with you guys, you know, really, what value, what price do you put in your health? So... I'm just saying, if you're looking to get into this, don't use them paper ones, guys. They aren't really doing much. Yeah, better than not having anything, but really, you know, you want to protect yourself properly. And so that's basically the 6,200, and then with the cartridge and stuff that come with it. And medium should be okay on most people, guys. Yeah? All right. 
So, <laughs> what's taking me a long time to figure out, right guys? I'm sharing it with you. Okay, stencils are pretty cool as well, all right? And, you know, with airbrushing it dries pretty quick. So people do what's called flashing on the airbrush and then turn the paint off and just press the air on and dry it with the air in the airbrush. Pretty funky, pretty cool, and stuff dries pretty quick. So stencils, people just use them for joke. They like so quick with their painting that they can stencil at the same time. All right, let's look at some paints. Things that you will need, guys, airbrush, cleaner, you will need that. If you're using acrylics and you get some beautiful acrylic colors, look at that, guys. That's per pearlized, yeah? So like a pearl color to it. I've got loads of these, right? And, um, they're really nice. Now, I'm learning, and look man, I'm not no professional. I'm learning about this stuff, guys, on the job, right? Hopefully, I'm gonna get better, but at the moment, guys, I am not perfect at this. Yeah, I know what I need, I know what to do. It's about putting it into practice, all right, guys? So, with this stuff, um, definitely you will need a thinner, right? And what's a thinner? This is supposed to be a decent thinner, guys, because they claim that this works with every type of acrylic paint, all right? So this is basically, paints are quite thick, you're supposed to shape them before you use them, but they still are too thick to sometimes work in the airbrush. So you have to thin the paints down, people do it with water, um, but you're probably better off using um, paint thinner. And by thinning it, obviously you want to get it to the viscosity of milk or semi-skimmed milk. All right, when it's at that kind of viscosity, it will pass through the airbrush without clogging it up. And if it's too thick, it won't come out. And I learned the hard way. Ah, <laughs> uh, blooming, yo, that has been a nightmare for me, guys. Not getting my paint thin enough, you get it? Um, so yeah, I've learned the hard way. So that's what part of it is all, if you get these little things in your head and right, you're gonna enjoy the experience. And if you're like me, you didn't know any of this stuff right, you're gonna be pulling your hair out, man. <laughs> So, you know, don't mix it. A lot of people, they, they mix it inside the cup on their airbrush. Have a separate mixing cup that you could use, you know, like, a, you know, you get these little tubs or something like that, or you mix it in there, mix it in there. And 50-50, people do 60-40, but if you're, whatever you're putting in of that, right, you want to put in about the same of that, really, and mix it up, okay? That way, it's gonna like more likely to pass through your airbrush. If you're using a thinner needle, you know, you're gonna struggle if your paint's thick, right? So definitely that's something you need to do, right? Okay, I've I've struggled with acrylics because I didn't have any thinner. Um, you know, you can use other things as well, but that's something I really didn't really get, I didn't really get it in my head, guys. I struggled with that. So, thinner, uh, you wanna prime stuff so primer comes in base colors of white gray and black for acrylics okay so you want to prime stuff now i didn't prime now you have to understand guys you know i'm learning as i go along i did not prime and you know and this is the result of not priming stuff so i've got a nice color there right i painted over one of my shells because i didn't prime it right the paint stuck though so you know, keying it with the sandpaper has definitely helped because it's not coming off, it's not flaking off, it's nice. Um, but yeah, I should have primed that, right? And depending on um, what kind of colour you're going to use, that is the primer you're going to use as well. Okay, so that's the kind of pearl kind of colours. Nice, isn't it, guys? Yeah? And once you've finished, so you primed it, you've painted it. When you're painting it, guys, don't paint loads on a fine dusting. Hopefully I'll show you this stuff as we go along, guys. We want a nice fine dusting on and off the thing that you're painting and you build up the coats. That's how it sticks. If you will spray a whole heap of it on and it's really thick, yo, your paint's not sticking and it's not gonna take forever to dry and it's not gonna be, a, it, it, you're more in danger of it peeling off, okay? So, and when you're finished, um, you, you can put like a gloss coat over it all right, um, so that's a matte coat. I've got a gloss coat as well. Um, what did I do? I gloss coated something. I can't remember where it is now, but yeah, I did. Oh, let me just show you guys. I did my um, railway thingy. All right, so I sprayed it on a bit thick, which wasn't a very good idea, but but yeah. So that's a gloss coat. You can see the shine, can't you guys? So I sprayed it. Um, yeah, I mixed up white with a bit, of, a bit of black, made a grey colour that I wanted that went with my track and and then basically sprayed it on, 
Okay, um, I did it with a big needle. I covered a lot of space, but it did get a bit messy um, because I wasn't maintaining my needle too good. I'm learning, guys, and it's pretty cool because you know I do learn through mistakes. I'm one of them people, so all good in the hood. So, and then I just basically put my uh, road markings and stuff onto it. So that's the gloss effect. Matt obviously won't have that shine on it, but it does protect the paintwork if you gloss or if you coat it. Okay, now the paint that I'm loving right now, and you guys are gonna love this paint as well, right, guys? is this all clad stuff this stuff right is beautiful man it's beautiful let me show you i mean i got this wrong now basically i must have had my pressure up too high and i messed it up and i didn't prime it either okay that's the problem but look at the color look at that color that's all masking tape on the windows and stuff guys so don't worry that i'll peel that off but you know you can still see a bit of the, you can see the black there that's my fault really i should have um primed it I should have actually done a black primer on it, um, but but look at the colour though, that's candy orange, right? There's some mad colours guys, they've got electric blue, they've got ruby red, they've got emerald green, and they look nuts, they look crazy. And yeah, so learning from my mistakes, if I was to do that again, I would obviously do what I clean it, so clean it up once you've sanded it obviously, sand it down, make it you know smooth, but you're not obviously taking chunks out, something for the paint to grip onto. And then you basically want to you want to prime it, you know. If it's a white shell, you don't have that problem. But these were they were already coloured, so you basically want to prime it. And black gloss looks mental. The black gloss in the all clad stuff, like right, guys, that's a paint in its own. I would actually even I'm gonna keep stuff gloss black because it's a beautiful colour, man. And you spray chrome on top of that, you've got the sickest black chrome you've ever seen nuts now what i want to go for is basically i want this beautiful candy kind of look so what i need to do is i need to spray this uh silver candy base all right and that looks like that all right it's a shame these bottles are small man right so i need to spray that now i did it on these but because it had colors underneath it was a problem if it's the white shell you shouldn't have a problem guys as long as you've keyed it so that and then you spray you know, your other colours like your ruby reds or the, or, and the candy colours are just stunning, man. They really are nice. Okay, that's the candy orange that was on that car. That's that there. Okay. Um, but yeah, you wait till I get my head around this, man. Again, I haven't... I'm, look, I've got four or five shells. I've got a Ferrari 458 I got from Japan. That was like £60, guys. There's no way I'm sp spraying that shell up with my flipping bod job airbrushing skills at this moment in time. So what I'm doing is I'm getting old shells that are a bit haggard and I'm basically sanding them down and I'm experimenting on these shells. You get it? There's no way I'm going to put a nice shell under that brush until I got my head around it. So yeah, my next thing is um, I'm going to have a go at this here. Sorry guys, I don't want to do a long vid, but you know, you need to know this stuff, man. <laughs> you need to know it. So the next one I'm going to do is that one there. I'm going to do it gloss black, right? I'm going to make that into a police, um, you know, SUV kind of thing. So, um, so I'll do it all black, gloss black, and then I'll do vinyl wrap on top of it, and then put a police light bar on the top. But yeah, so that's my next one. So I need to sand that, get that gloss off. By sanding it, you'll see straight away the colour. It's really dull. It's taking the shine off it. That's when you know you're kind of right. You've keyed it properly. Okay, right. What are we next? Um, if you wanted to do decals, I haven't tried it yet. And I'm not going to say much about it because I've not tried it. But you have this basically set, right? And, you know, you can get them as a three. And basically, you know, uh, after you've sprayed up, you can basically ap apply decals. Um, and you wet the decals with this stuff and you apply it on there uh, and you can use a brush to spread it out and stuff and get the way that you want and it coats over the decal basically all right um, I haven't tried that yet but that's just something if you're interested in, to, in it um, yeah and then when you're finished you've got again you've got a your gloss cover now for mini Z's I would definitely do a gloss cover because they are gloss paint aren't they so that's something I would definitely do uh, on a mini Z I will do a gloss coat once I've finished with it. All right, so you get that with it as well. This is thick, right? Now, the interesting thing, guys, Alclad is pretty cool because they say you don't need to thin it. This is enamel paint, all right, guys? You don't have to thin these. You can go straight into your brush. So this is, if you're starting off, it's probably an easier way to do it, right? To go straight to enamel. There's Alclad stuff, right? Um, it's really thin. You don't need to mix it so you don't have that headache. And it goes straight in. Okay. Um, and yeah, all that stuff 
on the in this range is like that. they've got some wicked metallic colors as well so um yeah one last thing <laughs> right really guys if you're spraying indoors you should go and buy a booth with an air extractor built in they're about a hundred pounds i'm not really looking to do that which is wrong with me to say this to you guys but i basically made my own budget booth <laughs> <laughs> I basically got a box and tore off, I don't know if you can see this right I got a box and tore off the top of the box, well you can't even see it I tore off the top of the box basically right guys and I've opened it like that and I spray it in there that's how I spray right because I'm doing it in the garage and not indoors the garage is very drafty, very cold, lots of wind in there so and I've got a really good mask but really if you're doing it indoors you should have an air booth with you know, it just has an extractor that goes to a window and out it goes. But that, I just made that out of a microwave, <laughs> microwave box. <laughs> Don't copy me, do the right thing. And I think basically I've covered everything I wanted to cover and I'll show you as I go along. And you might want to invest in getting a decent set of tweezers. The reason being is that um, when you put your masking tape on, if you put your big fingers on there, you could, you know, end up messing up the paintwork. So getting that masking tape off Tweezers are quite fine and you could just pick up a corner and pull it off. Okay, but that color guys You see that I bodged it up and it's speckled. I bodged that up. Yeah um, I should have really cleaned my brush thoroughly. I should have checked the pressure I should have sprayed somewhere else before I sprayed the car, but I didn't right So but I mean the colors just awesome ain't that gonna look mad on a mini Z You wait to see my electric blue Ferrari 458, which I will be doing God willing, right? So yeah, so that's basically all the stuff that you will need if you're planning to do it on your mini Z's. Right guys, sorry for making it long, but you know what guys, you know, this is saving, all right, long video, but saving you a lot of long work. <laughs> right, I've just condensed it all for you guys, so it makes it easier for you. Right, cool. Let me know how you get on, and hopefully I will be able to, it's a bit tight when I'm spraying, so I don't know if I can actually show you what I'm doing, but if I can, I will. So stay tuned for that guys. And yep, get subscribed, get notified. There is some crazy stuff to come. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you watch till the end, you guys are amazing. And I hope you enjoy your projects and stuff. I'll just show you something that I did spray up with the stencil. I just I wanted to make a tunnel, so I kind of did like a patchy effect so it was like it had been worn out in places and stuff. So I did a grey base coat and then basically used my stencil and uh, acrylics and just basically did that. So yeah. Um, I'll show you as I go along guys, some of the stuff I did a train, um, but yeah, it's cool, we'll see as we go along, not making it any longer, let's finish there, right guys, check it out on the next one.